you are um, muted during this uh, session, uh, really important. We will open it up to questions at the very end. Uh, but just uh, really make sure that you're muted. Uh, and if you have any questions, I'll open it up at the end. We'll go through kind of a high-level overview training for about 20 to 30 minutes about Facebook Ads Manager. I'm going to share my screen, so I'm going to get that up and running here in a second. Um, and then we will open it up to questions at the very end. But like I did mention, make sure that we are muting our, um, muting our mics uh, so we have a clean recording for today's training. Okay. So, we are going to jump in here. I'm just going to share my screen, make sure I get the right one. Oh, wrong one. Let's share here. Share. I'm going to take a look at the chat here. Sorry, can't stay. Helping someone buy a home. Please send recording. Totally, David. I will send the recording. That's no problem. I can do that. Totally. Stop the share. So in a second here, uh, I'm going to share my screen. And if you guys can just write in the chat box whether you can see my, um, my desktop, that would be greatly appreciated. So I'm going to share here. Can everyone, can somebody write in the chat box uh, if you can see my ads manager screen, my Facebook shortcuts? Uh, chat, yes, okay, awesome. Thanks, Sean, really appreciate it. Okay, so what happens oftentimes when we are looking at uh, Facebook, like I, I do wanna mention, because I, I just started recording now, uh, and I'm gonna be looking at these chats. Uh, if you have any questions in the meantime, as I'm going through, write them in the chat. Because uh, that, that'll help me more than anything really uh, provide value at the end. But like I did, I'm going to mention one more time because um, it's just make sure that your mic is muted. Um, and uh, so we have a clean recording for today. So that's the last time I'll mention that. We're sitting at 932, so we'll jump right into it. So uh, today I really want to take you guys through high-level overview on Facebook ads. You know, uh, We wrote an article not too long ago around stop boosting posts and start to actually run ad campaigns. And I really what I want to do today is take you through a high-level overview on how to set up an ad, what an ad looks like, and how you can essentially grow and, and scale your business online through running campaigns. So the biggest thing and the first thing I want to go through more than anything is just where, where to find ads manager. Uh, I find I talk to a lot of uh, real estate professionals, a lot of people in other sectors, and oftentimes what happens within uh, the ad spaces, they're boosting posts and they're saying that Facebook never worked for them because they boosted the post and uh, you know, they didn't get see any ROI off of Facebook. And I really want to differentiate today the difference between brand awareness and sales on Facebook. Or you know, if you're in a lead, the lead gen space, is what, which is what we uh, specialize in, the difference between attracting leads and just getting brand awareness. So Essentially, when you are in Facebook, in order to get into your ads manager account, essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna type in ads manager into the top left-hand corner, and that's gonna open up a page where it says ads manager shortcut. So, you know, I was once like you, I spent a ton of money on boosting posts. Uh, I ran it through uh, just boosting posts, and you know, everyone's learning. This is probably back in 2015, kind of take you back. So I started out uh, working for a company called uh, Best Buy. I was a manager there. Uh, the 2014-2015 landscape with Facebook ads is a lot different than it is now, and it requires a lot more strategy in order to get results. So when I started in this industry, what my really my focus was was to drive more traffic into our store when I was working uh, at Best Buy. And essentially, what I was doing is we would literally take our phones, we would record a video, say, "Come down to Best Buy. We have this, you know, this offer, this deal." We were just boosting posts, and we were literally just charging, uh, choosing people who essentially had iPhones and we were trying to upgrade them to the next iPhone and I was seeing results like just off of boosting posts and but again the landscape has changed significantly over the last I would say um, it's changed significantly over the last uh, two years especially but over the last three years it has changed significantly and you really want to understand ads manager so I just really wanted to set the context for today that boosting posts is a thing of the past and it's something that is only gonna help you is if you are trying to increase the, your brand awareness. It's really not gonna get you many sales uh, directly and you're not gonna be able to see that. But with what I'm gonna show you today with an ads manager is going to be something that 
is going to give you the ability to change the way that you think when it comes to ads. Now, that being said, um, you know, this isn't a quick fix. Like, you know, there are other things you have to learn. I'm taking you through a high level overview of it. Um, but I, I really do want to show you kind of how you would set up an ad and ads manager. Now, before you get to that point, it's super important that on your website, you have a Facebook pixel installed on your site. So when you're within the ads manager setting here, uh, in order to find out whether you have a pixel installed on your site, you literally just type in pixels into there and it will bring up the Facebook pixel page. Um, and then you can actually, what you can actually do is you can sift through and you can physically see any traffic that is on being driven to your, uh, to the pixel. So the pixel is essentially a tracking mechanism that shows you how much traffic is being driven to your website. If you have other funnels, uh, sales funnels uh, that are set up, essentially th this tracks page view. So you can actually set up picks, uh, different, what they call custom conversions on each page. And I know I'm going high level, but I'm going to take you through the process of how to set up an ad. But I, I want to give you some theory before we get to uh, the process of actually setting it up. Now to set up a pixel, literally just type in pixels in there. Uh, if you have a guy that sets up um, your, uh, if, it, if you have a developer that w you work with directly, essentially what you're going to want to do is make sure that pixel is installed. So if you have multiple ad accounts, that'll, that's where it'll show up. I'm just showing you the Studio PTBO one. So if you have multiple ad accounts, this is where it shows up and you can see this, you know, these are all the page views and then we have multiple uh, conversions set up on different pages. But in order to set up your Facebook pixel for the first time, you're literally just going to hit the details button that I, sh I hit at the very beginning uh, when I click on pixels and then literally you just click set up, you go install pixel and you can either manually install the code yourself. So if you're, if you're um, good at, you know, using the back end of WordPress, if you're using that, or if you're not so good, um, you know, you can also email the instructions to your developer. Uh, there is a, uh, uh, if you're using WordPress, there is a specific um, uh, code, there is a specific plugin you can get to easily install the pixel into the, into the, like the code, and it's just called Pixel My Site. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning of the call, uh, if you can mute uh, your actual mics, that'd be greatly appreciated. Any questions you have, just write them in the chat box. Um, so if you ma manually install the code yourself, uh, you can do that way, or you can email the instructions to your developer, and that will essentially give you the ability to run you know, more effective Facebook ads. How to see whether your pixel is installed properly, essentially what you're gonna do, you can see here that obviously there's a pixel, on, Facebook pixel on, um, there's a Facebook pixel on Facebook. But say for example, I went to the Studio PTBO website, we have a pixel installed. There is a Chrome extension that tells you whether your pixel is installed properly or not. It's called um, um, Facebook Pixel Hopper, and you get it on Chrome, and it sh essentially shows you, you know, whether you're pack tracking page view. And then, you know, once you get further into understanding how the pixel works, you can set up other uh, custom conversions like button click detected. And what that essentially means is, whenever somebody clicks this button here, I have a, I have a tracking code that goes directly there, and it goes into our CRM. So that's a really high level overview of what you can do with the pixel. Um, but I highly, 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 highly recommend getting a Facebook pixel installed on your site ASAP because if you don't have a pixel, if you're driving all this traffic to your website or if you're doing, you have an integrated marketing strategy and you don't have a pixel installed, all this traffic that's coming to your website, whether it be through radio, whether it be through print, whether it be through word of mouth, whether it be through SEO, Google AdWords, essentially is being lost. And you have no way of actually remarketing to those people unless you have a pixel installed on your site. So that's something I really highly recommend getting set up ASAP is a Facebook pixel. Like I said, easiest way to do that is click set up, install the pixel, and then uh, either send it to your developer um, or the other option is you can uh, physically install the code yourself with uh, the Facebook pixel helper. So coming back here, um, you know, into your ad accounts, we showed you at the beginning of the training how to essentially get to ad accounts. Uh, what you're gonna do here more than anything is you are going to uh, click on your ad account. Uh, now this is, um, you know, an old ad account that I used to use. We don't use it anymore. We use the studio one. Uh, so I'm going to get you, we're going to go to the studio one here. There we go. Wait for it to load. So this is essentially what your ad account should look like in the back end. So 
you'll see here, I'm going to take you through kind of a campaign that I have set up, just a basic lead gen campaign. Uh, I'm going to show you kind of the inner workings of how it works, but I'm actually going to go through and we're going to set up a campaign together, just a simple lead gen based campaign. So you can see here, naming conventions are super important to understand specifically uh, what you are running as an ad. So here, there, there's a, there's a, within the marketing realm, there's a thing called top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel. And essentially what that means is, you know, I talk to a lot of, uh, a lot of business owners that say, you know, it's like, well, they weren't a good lead because they didn't buy from me right away. Uh, that's not that doesn't necessarily mean they weren't a good lead. That just means that you didn't nurture them. There's an interesting stat out there that essentially says that 15% of people are ready to go right now. 35% of people need to be nurtured over a 90 day window. And then the other 50%, they just will never buy from you. So that's why it's so important. So 15% of people are ready to go right now. They'll reach out to you, you know, and that's why Google AdWords is so great. They'll reach out to you, give you a call or however you're doing that. But there's 35% of the population you're missing if you're not running retargeting ads to them. Or, uh, and that's part of the reason why uh, repeat messaging on radio or TV, uh, you see so many of these brands out there, they do repeat messaging and they run so many ads is because they don't really have a targeted way of reaching those people, but Facebook and with other mediums like YouTube, you have the ability to retarget people. So when we talk about top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel, essentially what it, that means is your top of funnel is people who no, don't know you. They have no idea who you are. It's a really, really cold audience. And that is where you really talk about their pain points and you really talk about who they are, you know, essentially like you, you're, you're trying to get in the mind of your avatar or your target audience. So top of funnel is that's really where that sits in the middle of funnel is more about you and how you can help them and uh, essentially providing them a solution. And the bottom of funnel is that direct call to action. So you can see here within our top of funnel real estate campaign, we're targeting real estate professionals spending about 15 bucks a day. Uh, something I do want to mention, you know, the days of spending $200 on Facebook and seeing results uh, just don't happen. We generally don't take on a client unless they have a minimum of $500 in ad spend budget. Uh, and that's now actually doubled because it, 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 it's taking us roughly around $1,000 in order to get real results in order to run a full fledged campaign. So $1,000 in ad spend is a good amount of budget to spend monthly on your ad spend. So that's just something to keep on the back of, uh, in the back of your head in order to see results. Uh, and every industry is different. Um, but specifically in real estate, you know, a thousand dollars a month in ad spend is something that, um, you know, is pretty standard. So you can see here, we're averaging about $7 a lead. Uh, you know, we're running a bottom of funnel campaign, which is essentially, you know, bottom of funnel is our conversions to our case studies. And then that actually gets people on the phone with me. So, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to show you the inner workings of this, but you know, we're averaging about $9 and 72 cents a call, um, $19 and 72 cents a call. So what that means essentially is, is all this money that's going through top of funnel is essentially driving them to get on a call with me. Now I have back I have back end funnel integration set up like with, with email that people are getting on calls with me, not even like running direct through Facebook. It's like I'm mining the data from Facebook and I'm running email automated campaigns on the back end that is essentially allowing us to really, uh, you know, really capture people in multiple different places, whether it be, you know, in a Facebook group, which, you know, if you're in here, you're in one of our Facebook groups, um, or the other option may be, you know, through many chat bot or like through Facebook messenger, the other option might be email. The other option might be just directly through Facebook, but we're really trying the goal. If you're in a lead gen based business is you want to grow your email list. And the great way to grow your email list is through paid advertising. So top of funnel real estate lead gen campaign. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you essentially how to set up a very basic lead gen based ad campaign. So essentially what you're going to do is you're going to click on the create button here. And this is going to give you the option to essentially choose your marketing objective. So when you boost a post, all the marketing objective is, is essentially taking awareness and it, you're, you're running either a brand awareness uh, campaign or a reach campaign. So that's great, but that's essentially the same way that you would advertise on traditional. So that's why people are saying, Oh, you know, Facebook does, isn't working for me. Uh, well, it's because you haven't learned how to use it yet. Um, and it's not your fault because Facebook wants to take your money and, you know, uh, fund Zucks private islands. Uh, and that's totally fine uh, because they're a business as well. But, I, you know, really goal today is to give you the tools necessary in order to 
you know, even get some small wins uh, when it comes to your Facebook ads. So this consideration right here um, is when people are starting out, generally what happens is they generally run traffic campaigns. Uh, within the traffic campaign, it's not bad, it's just you're, you're driving traffic there, you know, generally in the top of funnel, um, you know, we're seeing a lot of success with this lead generation. So if you're in a lead gen based business, which is the clients that we work with, uh, you want to run lead gen. So in the top of funnel, I generally will always either run video views uh, in order to decrease the cost um, in, in the middle of funnel or I'll run a lead gen in the top of funnel. Because essentially what I want to do, and the only way that you, only way you do really become effective is like Facebook is only part of the conversation. The other part of the conversation is how do I build that know, like, and trust either A, online, but also through an email automation sequence or through uh, ManyChat, which is a, um, which is your, you know, Facebook Messenger. How do I build relationships with people online? So within your lead generation, you know, we'll use this as an example. Essentially what you're going to do is you're going to want to name the convention. I always start with top of funnel. We'll use real estate as an example because that's the funnel I have running right now. So we'll name this real estate funnel. And then I'm going to show you the back end workings of the funnel we have set up right now. So essentially what you're going to do is you're going to click continue with the lead gen. But like to kind of give you an idea within this area here is like, you know, you have different methods in, in your marketing objective. So, you know, Generally in the top funnel, I recommend video views lead generation in regards to, you know, getting the best results in the lead gen based business, um, which I believe is almost everyone on this call. Uh, Ecom has a little bit different of, uh, of strategies, but this is just a very, what we call a minimum, a minimum viable funnel. So conversions again is a whole nother conversation that essentially just means if somebody like we're running conversions at our bottom of funnel and that essentially means is we want to get people to take a certain action, get to a certain uh, page on our back end funnel journey. So what a back end funnel journey means is that when you get to the very end of the funnel, that's when we're tracking for the lead. So if I want, if my goal is to get people on a phone call, essentially I want to set up uh, what they call a custom conversion. And I'm going to show you that in the back end afterwards. And I'm going to be open to answer any questions. I know this is a lot of information. You probably, for the first time you're seeing this, you're like, holy crap. I didn't know Facebook could do this, which is fun for me uh, because Facebook is a, such a, such a beast when it comes to advertising. Um, you know, we are partnered with uh, the top 1% of Facebook ad specialists in the world. Uh, I'm in Cat Howell's mastermind. Uh, we work with some of the best agency owners in the world, uh, really trying to give back to our current clients and with the clients that we're working with. But within lead generation, when you're running a top funnel real estate, or like we're just using real estate as an example, this can be applied to multiple sectors. Um, but you kind of have to figure out what works for you and what your audience, you know, this is just the blueprint. You still have to figure out the targeting, the uh, content, and we're going to get into that. So if you look at to your left here, there's three, uh, there's three areas that you are essentially, when you run a campaign, that you are essentially need to focus on. Your campaign, your ad set, which is your page, your dynamic creative, your audience, your placements, your budget and schedule, and your physical ad. So that's your actual content that you're actually physically doing. So your identity, your format, your media, your text your form, which is again, lead gen, you want to have that form. But this is essentially gonna take you through a high level on how to set up a Facebook ad lead gen. So essentially what we're doing here is again, um, something I do recommend doing to make your life a lot easier. Again here, it's copying that here. So you can put it in your ad set. Your ad set essentially is where your targeting is gonna sit. So this, you know, again, you're gonna to have to accept the Facebook lead ad terms for this page. Now in the top of funnel, there is a thing called dynamic creative that I really highly recommend using in the top of funnel. And essentially what it does is it gives you the option to test multiple headlines uh, and it'll automatically generate optimized creative com combination for your audience. So I always turn that on in the top of funnel. It's really nice because you can test multiple headlines uh, and you can see what works and what doesn't work. The next portion is your audience. So your audience essentially sits in like, and this is where the magic happens. The magic is in the targeting, which we call the science and the art, which, uh, sort and the, and the actual content, which we call the art. So really with Facebook ads, it's a, it's content plus, uh, plus science. Like it's really art plus science creates uh, magic really is what we consider. 
So when you're running a Facebook ad campaign, you can actually save your audiences. That'll actually essentially um, give you the ability. So we'll use this one, top of funnel real estate broker. So I have this all saved in here. Uh, I'm going to show you how to, in a second, how to you know change this. A lot of people, what they do is they, they punch in a bunch of different things into the people who match, but they miss the narrowed audience. So say for example, I'll give you this. I think this is the best example I have running right now, which is one of my uh, best ran ads that is running. It is, uh, I believe it's this one. No, it's not that one. I'll find this here in a second and then we'll go through. Okay, here's the one. Um, okay, so essentially I'm running a top of funnel real estate uh, plus broker and the people who match Gary Vaynerchuk I'm running in Canada and the US. Um, so to kind of give you an example, when you're running a campaign, I'm not gonna change this, but I'm running it in the United States, people who live in this location, you have your age demographic that you're running it to, you have your detailed targeting. Now, when you're running an ad, there's actually an, um, an ability to narrow further uh, so this is something that a lot of people miss when they're creating an audience. So if I go in here, um, there's this option essentially that I could choose my targeting. Uh, so if I go to my, down to my detailed targeting here, uh, I can type in, I'll type in broker for example. There's my broker and I can actually narrow the audience here. So essentially what Facebook is going to do is it's going to take the, it's going to find the targeting that you're after and then you're, it also must match uh, like a broker and they must be interested in Gary Vaynerchuk. They have to be. Uh, so, and you could put broker, you could add another broker here, like mortgage broker, for example, job title. Now it has to find, it's going to comb through the data uh, from the demographics and the interest, but it also must find people that match Gary Vaynerchuk. So a lot of uh, mistakes that people make in the targeting is they essentially take this content and they, uh, they just, slap in a bunch of uh, detailed targeting uh, and it doesn't work. Now, that, can it work? Yes, it can. We call it broad targeting. Broad targeting can work, but we really try to look, go think like, you know, if you think from the very start, who is my target audience? Who am I going after? If you, the more micro you can get in your targeting, the better results you're gonna have because you want the person on the other end to say, huh, that's me. So that's kind of high level overview on targeting. Um, so we'll just use this one as an example. Uh, this one's been working pretty well. And obviously the larger, um, the larger the area that you're targeting, you know, the bigger sample size you have. Uh, if you're a local based business, you know, you really have to get into the heads of the people you're trying to reach. Uh, if you're selling online, it's a little bit different, but again, your targeting still needs to be good. Uh, next thing is your daily budget. Um, you can actually change this to lifetime budget if you want. That's essentially means the ma like you can set the start and end date. I usually just do daily budget, you know, if it's like in the top funnel, 15 bucks a day or 25 or whatever it may be, whatever your budget is, you have to figure what, out what that is. Um, so essentially, I just got to change this really quick here. Okay. Daily budget. And then, yeah, we'll just set red my ads continuously starting today, $20 budget. Uh, that, so that's essentially your, what you call your ad set. The next portion is you're going to get into is your, um, your actual ad. So this is where you are essentially running your ad. Now, the only other thing I'll mention is in the ad set is I do recommend, um, naming your ad set because if you want to duplicate an ad set, um, you essentially really want to make sure that you know what your targeting is. So this is real estate funnel. Uh, this is my broker real estate plus broker. And it just gives you the ability to kind of go, th go back through your targeting to make sure that you're targeting properly uh, and make sure that you know what ad is running the best. Again, make sure if you're running ads to Instagram, especially with the dynamic creative, that's all set up. And then again here, this isn't too big because in the top of funnel, which is all we're gonna go through today, um, essentially the top of funnel is you wanna run as many ads as you possibly can. Like, this isn't always the case, but I'm just giving you an example of lead gen ad. Now, when you're gonna add your image, essentially, I'm gonna drop out of this and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, because I already have one set up, I'm gonna jump out of here and leave this page. 
I'm going to show you one that's already set up in the ads uh, portion because this is going to give you, uh, I think, a better understanding of, um, of essentially how you set up your creative. Let's bear with my internet right now. It's not acting the greatest. Okay. This is a great feeling, you know, like, you know, when you have this set up properly, $3.83, you know, a lead came in today and they're gonna, they're gonna be targeted. Uh, this lead actually went through our many chat bot and they also are going through an email sequence. So, you know, this is, this is all automated. So we're gonna use this one as an example. I guess we'll use the Gary Vee one as an example because I like this one. So we're gonna go to your ad setting. Uh, we're gonna edit, okay. So we were in the summary setting. So this is essentially what your last ad will look like. Um, I'm running this ad to people like really, um, it's a really broad targeting. Um, you know, we're running essentially anyone, anyone that's a real estate agent uh, or sales representative or professional and essentially has interest in Gary Vee and we're getting good results off of this um, because this is everything he preaches but he doesn't really take you through the inner workings of how to actually set up an ad uh, and how to be effective. So it's really great because tons of people are running, um, you know, running a ton of content, which is amazing and they're growing their businesses, but they could be growing their businesses so much faster if they added paid advertising in. Um, so essentially what we're doing here is, you know, we have our, our images that we've selected and essentially you just literally go select images and in here, you can either upload files or choose. So I could add in multiple other images, like I could add in this crazy looking house upside down. Um, and that's all set up there. So I have all these images that are running in the background uh, and they're essentially just choosing which one is working best and it's gonna start feeding them to whatever they think is going to be the best um, possible option. So they, you know, like we said, this is called dynamic creative and it's something I really highly recommend in the top of funnel. Um, essentially what you're looking at here is you've selected multiple images. You can actually add videos as well. So I could add videos into the mix if I wanted to. Um, you know, that's another option. You could test them. You can kind of what we do, what we call a split test and see what one works and what doesn't work. Now when I'm running dynamic creative, generally I want to keep my primary text the same because I really want to get it in the mind of who I'm talking to. So if you're a real estate professional on the call, um, you know, and you listen to Gary Vee, this is probably gonna to talk to you. So Gary Vee is telling you to post content on the daily, but you aren't seeing any results. Your calendar isn't full, and you're trying to attract more business through content creation. Uh, but if it's not working, uh, but it's not working. On top of that, you're paying someone to post this content. What if I told you you could instantly fill your calendar with leads with having knock on doors, attending every networking event, rely on inconsistent referrals, and eliminate uh, print advertising that can't be tracked for a return on your investment? And then it just goes on, goes on, um, and then it asks the question, but how do you even attract leads without knock, uh, uh, with no door knocking, attending networking events? These are all pain points of a lot of real estate professionals. It's like really getting in the mind of the person you're trying to serve. You know? And that's really what we're trying to do, is like, who are, who are we trying to serve, and uh, how, what, how can we provide them value? And really it comes down to more than anything, is like, what are their pain points and what's the solution? Okay, so here's this free training that we're gonna offer you. now. When we have the headline, we have the free training, so I'm testing multiple headlines to see what one works best. Uh, and I'm really trying to dive into more than anything, uh, running multiple ones in order to you know, provide as much value on the back end. So I have automate lead gen, uh, fill your calendar with high quality leads, and then I'm just running that at the top of funnel and I'm testing multiple different things. The next portion again here is your optional display link. Uh, so you can show that up if you want. But my call to action is essentially download. Um, you know, give something of free value. A lot of people have ran a lead gen ad before and they're like, oh, it didn't work. It's like, well, maybe your offer just sucked. So if your offer is terrible and it's not providing value, of course people aren't gonna click through. Because I hear this argument often. It's like, well, whenever I get these ads, I don't, I don't click through, you know, like especially if, they, if I have to give my email. Well, it's like maybe your offer just isn't good. Um, you know, and I hate to be, sound harsh, but you know, people will only click through if your offer is good. So, you know, you really have to touch on the pain points of the people you're talking to. Uh, you're gonna make sure your offer is really great. So, we use a program called Zapier that essentially zaps all of our leads into our CRM and it automatically starts the sequence. Um, within your lead form, essentially what you're gonna do 
um, you know, when you're running this, you're literally going to click either, you're going to click a uh, new form and you're going to fill it out. But I'm going to give you an example of what an existing form looks like. Um, so we have this one. We'll use this one as an example. So this is essentially when you create, create, create lead form for the first time, you are essentially going to, um, you're going to take this lead form, uh, free real estate training, and you're going to go for more volume. Um, and essentially what you're going to do here is you are going to put in your intro. So, you know, like write your headline, uh, write your paragraph. You're going to fill in your question. So what information do you want to get from your client? So first name, last name, email. Uh, and then the next element is your privacy policy. This is super important. Your privacy policy generally will sit at the bottom of your website if you have it. And if you've told your developer that you want that and you're doing marketing, it sits at the bottom of your website right here. It's super important they have a privacy policy on your actual. So you literally just copy the privacy policy. And then from there, you come back into Ads Manager, you paste that privacy policy. Super important that you have that privacy policy for that claim, disclaimer. And then your thank you screen. Uh, and this is where we are running our mini chat bot. So we say thanks, your training's on its way, it's gonna come to them via email. So this is all automation on the back end. You can do this manually as well. You can download your leads. And uh, if you're not sure how to automate this stuff, um, automation can be a little bit difficult unless you have somebody that can do it. Uh, but this is, you know, even if you just take this today and take the, the lead gen stuff and start running lead gen ads and really start to think about who your audience is and who, what your offer is, it's going to definitely help you. So yeah, tap below to visit our video training. And as soon as they click this, it brings them to a many chat bot that essentially talks to them and says, Hey, here's your free training, yada, yada. But it's also going on in the email as well. Uh, and then that's all set up on the other end, but that's essentially how you set up a lead gen ad. Um, and this is, I hope this really helps you really dive into Facebook lead gen. And then essentially once you choose your instant form, the next, you want to make sure that your pixel is running here. So if you have a pixel installed, make sure this is uh, set for conversion tracking and literally just click publish and you're set to go. And that's, that's your lead gen ad. Now in order to download your, your leads. So for example, here you have your campaigns, uh, that come in. So we have one lead form, uh, and you find it, you go to your ad set, you can see here. Okay. So I have a, a lead in this ad set. I literally just go in here. I'm in my now, now I'm in my ad setting because if you click down this arrow, it brings you to the ad setting and I can just literally download my lead form. And so I click download. I can either download it as a CSV or I can download it as a Excel file and that, and then I can upload it to my CRM. And that's kind of the manual way of doing it. The other option that you could do is use Zapier and that will essentially allow you to uh, push all of your leads that come in and put them through um, um, and essentially just put them through uh, your, your auto uh, email responder and it will really help you, uh, you know, grow your business. And the reason that is, is coming back to this 50% of people will never buy from you. 15% of people are ready to go right now. So it's super important with, and you know, leads can go stale within five minutes, especially in the real estate industry. So, so your automation on the back end needs to be set up in order to physically get an automated lead come through your, you know, through your business and they need to be talked to immediately. That's why having multiple touch points is super important. Uh, so your lead form, boom, boom, they go through a uh, mini chat bot, they go through email autoresponder. And then from there, you're really set up on the back end in order for success. Now, nice thing about it is we actually have a conversion running in the back end. So uh, I'm gonna go through this really high level and I'm gonna open it up for questions. Um, but this, you probably won't understand this uh, and how to do it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain at the very least that it's possible. So say for example, lead comes in. You know, if we go back to the first of the month, You know, lead comes in, 43 leads have come in so far this month, three phone calls. Uh, we spent about 400 bucks so far this month. Um, so lead comes in, boom, boom, we're ready to go. That's all set up and that's all good. Essentially what's gonna happen here is that we call this retargeting. So if you look at our ads here, uh, let's go into ad set setting and edit. We are now running what we call a, a conversion ad. So we're targeting people who like for the view campaign, but here also is where you, you know, we're essentially running engagement lead ads. So anyone that has become a lead is now going to see our testimonial videos and how we do that is through what we call custom audiences. Um, in order to get in custom audiences, you literally just type in audiences into your ads manager. 
And this allows you to run your retargeting. Um, you're retargeting on the back end here. Uh, let's go CEO. You can actually, in your custom audiences, run ads. And essentially what we do here is we create an audience, we create a custom audience, and then we have website traffic we can target. And that's why I said the pixel is so important. But you also have a lead form here. So any leads that have come in, you can actually physically choose that lead form and you can retarget all those people uh, with testimonial videos from that lead form. So when you're talking about growing a business, uh, the, the amount of options that you have within Facebook is just unreal. Uh, but really, that's what I wanted to leave you with today is really a high level overview on how to set up Facebook ads, how to set up a lead gen based ad uh, in the lead business. But really what I want to do now um, is I want to open it up for any sort of questions. Um, so if you have a question, you can either type it in the comment section uh, below uh, or you can just speak up now, uh, unmute yourself and if you're having trouble. I muted some of you. So if you're having trouble unmuting yourself, just let me know uh, in the comment section and I'll unmute you. Uh, but now is the opportunity to ask any questions. Uh, I'm going to open up the floor now. I know it's a lot. <laughs> I go through some of this high level training and people are like, Oh my God, this is like a lot different than I thought it was. I thought I could just boost a post and it would work. Um, not necessarily the case, but again, for brand awareness sake, it is. So do we have any questions? We have quite a few people on the call. And give people an opportunity to ask any questions. Speak now, forever hold your peace. Does everyone know where the chat? I, well, yeah, every, pretty much everyone has actually physically said in the chat. Um, I guess I will go around and I, okay, what are your thoughts about video? So Sean asks, what are your thoughts about video or pictures for the ads? So that's a great question. So mistake I see a lot of people make within Facebook is they are running very heavy text image based, uh, you know, photos. So especially in the real estate industry, I see this a lot. Facebook does not like running, um, photos that have more than 20% text on it within, um, uh, within the ad. So essentially what that means is your, your image should have very little text. So there is a, uh, a resource that we use called Facebook text overlay. Yeah. So it's a text overlay tool and it t uh, I could upload it, upload the photo and it'll tell me whether it has more than 20% uh, text. So uh, that's just, if you're going to run a photo, uh, I think photo and, uh, and video, I would test them both because again, it all depends how compelling is the, is the photo? How compelling is the video? Are you good on video? And it's all questions we ask clients we work with. It's like, are you good on video? If you're not good on video, then you should probably just find a photo. If you're, if you're great on video and you can communicate well, then start doing video. Um, with the photo, the only thing I would say is make sure the text is less than 20% of the image. Find more images that really pop out, like, you know, even create some funky images. We have some images running in our bottom of the funnel and that's like upside down house. And the headline is like, does your real estate business feel like it's upside down? And uh, you know, it's like the text complements the photo. Um, but again, like, you know, with we do video as well, where me talking, you know, it's like, are you tired of knocking on doors, attending every networking event? Like if you can rhyme these things off and really touch on the pain points in video, but then I would say do video, uh, but pictures are a great way. And then you just have to, uh, you know, manufacture your sales copy to make sure that it speaks directly to your audience. Uh, what I highly recommend doing is hiring a, a copywriter uh, for any ads, especially if you're setting up a funnel. So generally what we do uh, when you're working with our entire team is we have a copywriter that specifically crafts the copy because people underestimate the power of good sales copy, uh, you know, to really bring home an emotion, really drive people in. Uh, so good sales copy is important. Uh, so to answer your question, video, pictures, I would say, um, both I, you know, like, you know, use, try test them. The biggest thing that you'll find, like, especially within the dynamic creative and the top of funnel is which, which I recommend is test multiple things and see what works and what gets your, what, what is getting the best results? Is it, is it the video? Does the video suck and no one's responding to it or they're responding to the photos? It really, it's really a test and learn thing. Um, 
Amelia, that's amazing. Now I won't spend money on boosting posts. That's like, honestly, if you got that out of this uh, talk, I'm happy. Uh, you're just funding Mark Zuckerberg's um, uh, private island. That's all you're doing by boosting a post. And it's great for brand awareness, but if you can really dive into the campaigns, uh, it'll really help you. Is the traffic monitored by Pixel strictly the traffic that comes through Facebook? Uh, no. So the Pixel essentially sits on the website, and if you run uh, multiple, like if I go in here, um, and you can see this here, five ad sets. Um, so if I'm running a automatic placements, um, here I'm gonna click edit placements to give you an example. So you can actually run what they call audience network retargeting. Retar uh, and this is essentially, if you've ever been on a, on a website and all of a sudden you, um, you get like um, an image, like I'll give you an example, I had somebody message me the other day and they're like, I saw Studio PTO on Tinder. <laughs> we're not on Tinder. Uh, we're just writing an ad and that's audience network targeting. Uh, you know, it's like, or um, that's audience network or if you're on another website, uh, essentially the pixel is gonna track any traffic that's coming to the website and it's gonna retarget them if you have a retargeting cam campaign set up on multiple websites. So that's, uh, so to answer your question, uh, is the traffic monitored by Pixel strictly the traffic that comes through Facebook? No, it's traffic that went to the website. I hope that makes sense. How long do you recommend the sales copy is to go with your ad? That is a great question. So sales copy, again, um, lengthwise, you know, like it's like, I, I like to like long like you know a lot of people are, a lot of people in the in this industry say oh you know like long form sales copy doesn't work well Rick yes it does uh, the numbers speak for themselves long form sales copy does uh, does work you know if you if you see those long form sales like but it only works if you're speaking directly to one av avatar what we call one audience you know if you're touching on all the pain points like if you look at our top of funnel ad copy. Um, here it's fairly long it's not as it's not the longest I've seen I've seen longer ads before uh, we'll pull up this one I've definitely seen longer ads than this one that have worked and we ran longer ads you know free training like this is our ad that we're running right now in the top funnel I've seen super long ads uh, long-form sales copy does work as well um, it really just all depends on like you know it's like Again, like if you're not good at writing, hire a copywriter to write your ads because you're like the copy more than anything is going to be the thing that is going to make, either make or break your, um, your, your ads that you're running. The copy is so important. Uh, so long form sales copy, it works, but you have to be cautious of where you put the long form sales copy. Like in the top of funnel, if I'm running a Facebook video, I'm going to probably keep my and I'm running, and my target objective is video views, then I'm probably gonna run just a shorter copy because I want people to watch my video. I don't want them to read my copy. I want my copy to be super short so that they actually watch the video because that's my target objective. If my target objective is lead gen, uh, running a long form sales copy is not a bad thing because you're, especially at the top funnel, you wanna get their information. Um, so how long, um, that's a hard question, you know, at the very least, a couple paragraphs. If it's video view objective, I keep, recommend keeping it short as possible. But that being said, um, you know, within this space, everything is up for um, debate. And some things work that you're like, this shouldn't work, but it is. So the biggest thing I say to that is test things, see what works and what doesn't work. Like I said, uh, at the beginning of the call, uh, the days of the $200 budget and getting crazy results, like it's just not going to happen. You know, it's like, we don't take on clients under a thousand dollar ad spend because we want to get them great results. Um, so, you know, I recommend investing at least $500 a month into learning. Uh, it, you know, it does take time to learn how to set up an ad campaign. Like this is just very basic, but this will, I believe that this will at least help you save a little bit of money, uh, and not, you know, give Facebook all the money in regards to boosting a post. So I hope that answered your question. Um, are you rerunning this seminar for us to watch later? It was too fast for me to catch it all. I have, I've been recording this entire seminar. So uh, I will post it to the uh, Facebook group. 
um, and uh, the digital marketing hacks uh, for real estate professionals. We have over 100 people in there. And then our marketing hacks group, it'll be posted in there as well. So you will be able to listen to this back later. That is no problem. There's been other people who've asked me the same thing. Uh, and yeah, that is really it. So unless there are any questions, we are, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Uh, I will give you guys a few more minutes. I do have to jump on a sales call with the client. Um, but I want to give you guys some value here. So I have a few more minutes. So if you have any more questions, now is the time to ask them. If you don't, we will stop the recording and I will post it directly to the Facebook group after this call. I really do appreciate everyone's time. Um, you know, if you have any questions about Facebook ads, if you have any questions about, um, you know, about how you really skip, grow and scale your business online, we would love to have a conversation uh, with you. Uh, we really look for business owners that are looking to, you know, uh, attract more leads for the business, automate the marketing and sell more. And that's really our, our desire. And that's why we've started the Facebook marketing hacks um, for real estate professionals. So if you're a real estate professional on the call, uh, you know, we have some amazing systems that can work for you. The other element is if you're just a business owner, we have some also amazing, um, not just a business owner. If you're a business owner in another sector, we, we work with multiple sectors. Um, if you have any questions, just send me an email or, uh, probably the easier way is just post any questions you have in the Facebook group, uh, because either myself, uh, or somebody else on my team can answer the question, uh, if I can't get to it. And I know that, you know, this group that we're creating in this, uh, community we are creating online it has a lot of people who have a lot of knowledge around um, around multiple things but if you have any Facebook ad related questions I would be happy to answer any of them uh, in the group to the best of my ability uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this training and got some out of it uh, somebody said in the call like in the chat that they're gonna stop boosting posts which you know my job here is done so I really appreciate everyone's time. Uh, I hope you have a great day and uh, we will chat with you soon. Have a good day.